The sun had long since set over the adobe walls of Taos, Pueblo, casting a golden glow over the ancient structures that seemed to stretch up to the heavens themselves. The air was heavy with the scent of pinyon pine and the distant calls of ravens, their haunting cries echoing through the valley like a chorus of mournful spirits. It was a time of great change in the world beyond the Pueblo's borders and borders. The Aztec Empire, once a mighty force in Mesoamerica, was beginning to decline, its power waning as rival kingdoms rose up to challenge its dominance. <laughs> Meanwhile, in a distant land of Spain, the Reconquista was underway with Christian armies pushing back against the Moors who had conquered much of the Iberian Peninsula. But here, in the heart of the American Southwest, a very different kind of revolution was brewing. The Taos Pueblo Revolt, as it would come to be known, was a grassroots uprising that would shake the foundations of Spanish colonial rule and forever change the course of Native American history. It began with whispers, quiet murmurs of discontent among the Pueblo's inhabitants who had long been subject to the whims of their Spanish overlords. The colonizers, armed with guns and crossbows, had brought disease, oppression, and exploitation to the once thriving community. Many of the Daos Pueblo people had died from diseases such as smallpox, introduced by European settlers who had little regard for the lives they touched. As tensions mounted, a charismatic leader emerged among the Pueblo's population, a man named Poche, whose name would become synonymous with bravery and defiance in the annals of history. Poche was a member of the Taiwa tribe, one of the three primary groups that made up the Daos Pueblo people. And he was a shrewd strategist, well versed in the ways of his ancestors, who had lived on this land for centuries before the arrival of European colonizers. Poche's vision was clear. He sought to drive the Spanish out of their sacred territory and reclaim the land that was rightfully theirs. To achieve this goal, he would need to rally the entire Pueblo behind him, a daunting task given the divisions that had grown between different factions within the community. But Poche was not one to shy away from challenge. He spent countless hours gathering support among the Pueblo's people, using his natural charisma and deep understanding of their culture to galvanize the community. He knew that the key to success lay in forging alliances with other Native American tribes who had also suffered at the hands of the Spanish. One by one, Poche reached out to these groups, the Jicarilla Apache, the Lipan Apache, and the Pueblo people from nearby Acoma. Together, they formed a powerful coalition united in their determination to resist the colonizers' advances and reclaim their ancestral lands. As the winter of 1325 approached, the stage was set for a full-blown rebellion. Poche's forces, now numbering in the hundreds, were ready to strike back against their oppressors. The time had come to take a stand, to assert their independence, defend their way of life, and restore honor to their ancestors. The battle would be fierce, with both sides suffering heavy losses, but in the end, it was the Taos Pueblo people who emerged victorious, having successfully driven the Spanish out of their territory. The victory was all the more sweet given the long history of oppression and exploitation that had preceded it. In the years that followed, Poche's legacy would be cemented as a hero of the Taos Pueblo revolt. His bravery, wisdom, and leadership would inspire generations to come, serving as a beacon of hope in the face of adversity. And though the Spanish would eventually return, their presence now marked by a new era of cooperation and coexistence, the spirit of Poche's rebellion would never be forgotten a testament to the unyielding resilience and determination of the Dallas Pueblo people. The sun was setting over the adobe-walled compounds of Taos Pueblo, casting a warm orange glow over the thatched roofs and the faces of its inhabitants. It was a time of great change and upheaval in the Rio Grande Valley, as the once peaceful Taiwa people found themselves caught between the expanding empires of the Aztecs to the south and the nomadic Comanche tribes to the north. In the early 14th century, Taos Pueblo was a thriving community with its inhabitants living in harmony with the land and the spirits that inhabited it. The Taiwas were skilled farmers, hunters, and traders, and their village was renowned for its beautiful pottery, intricate weaving, and expert craftsmanship. However, as the years passed, the Taiwas began to feel the weight of external pressures. To the south, the Aztecs were expanding their empire, seeking new sources of gold, silver, and other valuable resources. They had already conquered much of Mesoamerica 
and their armies were now pressing into the northern territories. The Thai was aware of the Aztecs' reputation for brutality and enslavement, knew that they could not resist a full-scale invasion. Meanwhile, to the north, the Comanche tribes were also on the move. These fierce horsemen had been raiding and pillaging their way across the Great Plains, seeking new lands to conquer and plunder. The Taiwas had long traded with the Comanches, exchanging goods and stories, but they knew that these nomadic warriors would not hesitate to attack if threatened. As tensions mounted, a group of young Taiwa warriors, led by a charismatic leader named Toledo, began to secretly gather in the hills surrounding the Pueblo. They were determined to take action against the encroaching threats from both directions. The elder leaders of Taos Pueblo, however, were more cautious, preferring to maintain the peace and avoid conflict. One fateful day, as a group of Aztec warriors arrived at the Pueblo, seeking to establish trade and alliances, Tueto saw his chance. He rallied his followers and launched a surprise attack on the unsuspecting Aztecs, driving them off with minimal casualties. The Comanche tribes, alerted to the commotion, responded swiftly, sending their own warriors to join forces with the Taiwas. The stage was set for the Taos Pueblo Revolt of the early 14th century. Over the next several years, the Taiwas would engage in a series of guerrilla warfare campaigns against both the Aztecs and Comanches, using their knowledge of the land, their skill as hunters and warriors, and their unwavering determination to defend their homeland. Uh, as the battles raged on, the people of Taos Pueblo became increasingly adept at defending themselves. They constructed elaborate traps and ambushes using the rugged terrain to their advantage. They also developed new tactics such as hit-and-run attacks and clever deception strategies which allowed them to harass their enemies without suffering heavy losses. Despite being vastly outnumbered, the Taiwas managed to hold off both empires, inflicting significant damage on their armies and disrupting their supply lines. The Aztecs in particular were shocked by the bravery and cunning of the Taiwa warriors, who seemed to appear and disappear like ghosts from the desert sands. As the years passed, the revolt became a legendary tale told around campfires and in council chambers. The people of Daos Pueblo celebrated their victories with songs, dances, and feasts, knowing that they had defended their way of life against all odds. And though the conflict would eventually subside, the Taiwas would always remember the bravery of Tueto and his followers, who had dared to stand up against the mighty empires of the Aztecs and Comanches. In the end, the Taos Pueblo revolt of the early 14th century would become a testament to the indomitable spirit of the Taiwa people, who had faced down the forces of empire building and emerged victorious. Their story would be passed down through generations, inspiring future generations to defend their lands, their cultures, and their very way of life. The sun rose over the adobe-walled homes of the Taos Pueblo people, casting a warm glow over the dusty streets of their ancestral lands. In the early 14th century, this Tiwa-speaking tribe had thrived for generations in what is now northern New Mexico and southern Colorado, their presence etched into the very landscape itself. The Pueblo's unique culture was deeply rooted in the land, shaped by the rhythms of nature and the traditions passed down through generations. The Rio Grande River, which flowed gently through the valley, had been a lifeblood for the Taos Pueblo people since time immemorial. Its waters nourished their crops, quenched their thirst, and provided a source of sustenance for their livestock. As the morning light crept over the horizon, the villagers began to stir. Women emerged from their homes, their dark hair adorned with intricate braids and woven patterns as they made their way to the central plaza. The air was filled with the sweet aroma of freshly baked tortillas wafting from the ovens, mingling with the scent of pinion pine and sagebrush. The villagers gathered around the ceremonial kiva, a sacred space where ancient stories were shared and traditions were passed down. Elders spoke in hushed tones, their eyes gleaming with wisdom as they recounted the history of their people. The Daos Pueblo's connection to the land was palpable, a living, breathing entity that had been forged through generations of hard work, resilience, and spiritual devotion. As the sun climbed higher in the sky, children played outside their laughter carrying on the wind. They chased each other through the adobe streets, their bright cloth garments fluttering like butterflies as they explored every nook and cranny of their beloved village. The sound of hammering echoed from the nearby craftsmen's quarters, where artisans were busy shaping and polishing the distinctive black pottery that had become synonymous with the Dallas Pueblo people. Meanwhile, the men of the community ventured out to tend to their livestock, guiding cattle and sheep across the rolling hills as they worked the land. The earthy scent 
of damp soil and fresh grass filled the air as the villagers went about their daily routines, unaware of the challenges that lay ahead. The Dawas Pueblo people had long lived in relative harmony with their environment, respecting the delicate balance between nature and human existence. However, the arrival of European settlers would soon disrupt this equilibrium, introducing foreign diseases, new technologies, and unfamiliar customs that would fundamentally alter the course of their history. For now, though, life continued as it always had, a harmonious dance between the people, the land, and the spirits that governed both. As the sun dipped below the horizon, casting a warm orange glow over the village, the Taos Pueblo people gathered once more around the kiva. The elders shared stories of their ancestors, recounting tales of bravery, resilience, and wisdom. The villagers listened intently, their faces aglow with a deep connection to the land and their heritage. In this moment, the Dao's Pueblo people were a vibrant, thriving community, deeply rooted in their ancestral lands and traditions. Little did they know that the winds of change would soon sweep across their valley, forever altering the course of their history. But for now, all was peaceful as the stars began to twinkle in the night sky above, deep within the arid landscape of what is now northern New Mexico. A majestic adobe-walled city stood tall, its ancient structures bearing testament to the enduring spirit of the Dao's Pueblo people. For centuries, this independent nation had thrived, governed by its own wise elders and guided by the rhythms of nature. The language spoken within these sacred walls was unique born from the confluence of ancestral tongues and the whispers of the wind. As one approached the Pueblo's entrance, the scent of pinion smoke and roasting green chile wafted through the air, mingling with the soft chanting of prayers and stories. Inside, the adobe buildings seemed to blend seamlessly into the landscape, their earthen walls adorned with intricate petroglyphs that told tales of creation and the balance between humans and the natural world. At the heart of this thriving nation stood the central plaza where the Pueblo's leaders gathered to deliberate on matters of state. The Dao's Pueblo was a confederation of clans, each with its own distinct identity and customs. The Kachina clan, for instance, was renowned for their expertise in weaving and pottery, while the Tua people were masters of hunting and warfare. The government of the Pueblo was a complex web of councils and leaders with the Kikivisi chiefs serving as the chief advisors to the Pueblo's governor. These esteemed individuals had spent years studying the ancient traditions and wisdom passed down through generations, allowing them to make decisions that balance the needs of all members of society. The language spoken within these walls was a rich tapestry of sounds and meanings woven from the threads of Tiwa, Tiwa, and other ancestral tongues. It was a language born from the earth itself, shaped by the rhythms of nature and whispers of the wind. Words like Juanita, the land, and Soem, the sun held sacred significance, while phrases like Pueblo Grande, Great Village, evoked a sense of pride and community. The Dao's Pueblo was also a place of vibrant cultural expression where art and spirituality intertwined. The Pueblo's artisans were renowned for their exquisite pottery woven blankets and intricately carved wood figurines. In the evenings, the sound of drums and singing filled the air as the people came together to celebrate the cycles of life and honor their ancestors. As the sun set over the adobe-walled city, the Taos Pueblo's independence was palpable, a testament to the enduring power of tradition and community. For centuries, this nation had thrived, governed by its own wise elders and guided by the rhythms of nature. The wind whispered secrets in the ears of the people, while the earth itself seemed to pulse with the heartbeat of this resilient and vibrant culture. In this context, the Taos Pueblo revolt of the early 14th century was not just a rebellion against Spanish colonization, but a desperate attempt to preserve the very fabric of their way of life. As the forces of change began to encroach upon their sacred land, the people of Dao's Pueblo stood united in their determination to protect their independence and cultural heritage. As the sun rose over the majestic Dao's Pueblo, a sense of unease settled over its inhabitants. The once peaceful village nestled in the heart of the Rio Grande Valley was now facing an unprecedented threat from the West. Spanish conquistadors, fueled by their insatiable appetite for conquest and riches, had set their sights on the region. The Pueblo's residents, a proud and resilient people, had long been wary of outsiders. 
They knew the stories of the brutal treatment meted out to Native American tribes at the hands of European colonizers, but they were not prepared for the level of aggression and cunning that would soon descend upon them. In the early 14th century, the Dallas Pueblo was a thriving community with hundreds of people living in harmony with the land. The villagers were skilled farmers, hunters, and traders, and their Pueblo was renowned for its exquisite architecture and rich cultural heritage. However, this very prosperity would prove to be their downfall. As the Spanish conquistadors began to make their presence known, they brought with them a host of diseases that had devastating effects on the Daos Pueblo population. Smallpox, influenza, and malaria swept through the village, decimating entire families and leaving many more weakened and vulnerable. The once thriving community was suddenly beset by death and despair. Meanwhile, the Spanish colonizers were busy surveying the land, mapping out potential routes for their future settlements, and identifying strategic locations to establish missions. They saw the Taos Pueblo as a key prize in their quest for dominance, and they were determined to bring its inhabitants under their control. The Pueblo's leaders, wise and courageous men and women, knew that resistance was futile against the superior firepower and numbers of the Spanish. Yet they also refused to surrender without a fight. They had witnessed the brutal treatment meted out to other Native American tribes and were determined to protect their way of life at all costs. As tensions mounted, the Dallas Pueblo began to mobilize in secret. Warriors and hunters formed makeshift militias, while women and children prepared for the worst. The air was thick with anticipation as both sides readied themselves for the inevitable conflict. The Spanish conquistadors, led by the ruthless Hernando de Alvarado, saw the Taos Pueblo as a prize to be won. They brought with them guns, armor, and an unyielding determination to claim the land for their king and country. The stage was set for a brutal and bloody conflict that would shake the very foundations of the Pueblo. In this treacherous landscape, the fate of the Taos Pueblo hung precariously in the balance. Would its residents be able to resist the might of the Spanish conquistadors, or would they succumb to the pressures of colonization? The outcome was far from certain, but one thing was clear. The Taos Pueblo was on the cusp of a great and terrible transformation that would leave an indelible mark on its people and their way of life. As the sun set over the adobe-walled Pueblos of Daos, whispers of rebellion spread like wildfire through the narrow streets and alleyways. The air was thick with tension as the Daos Pueblo people gathered in secret conclave, their faces etched with determination and fear. For years, the Spanish conquistadors had exploited their lands, forced them to convert to Christianity, and imposed heavy taxes on their meager harvests. The once independent Pueblo dwellers were now mere vassals of the Spanish crown, their freedom and way of life slowly suffocating under the weight of colonial rule. The final straw came when Don Pedro de Peralta, the ruthless governor of New Mexico, decreed that all Taos Pueblo men must abandon their traditional farming practices and take up arms to fight against the nomadic Apache tribes. The Pueblo elders knew this was a ploy to break their spirit and enslave them further. They had seen it before the brutal suppression of their ancestors by the Aztecs, the forced assimilation into Spanish culture. As the darkness deepened, the leaders of Daos Pueblo, including Grey Wolf, Little Bear, and White Deer, convened in a hidden arroyo outside the Pueblo walls. The wind carried the whispers of the ancients, urging them to stand tall against their oppressors. With hearts heavy with grief and anger, they resolved to take back what was rightfully theirs, their freedom. Under the cover of night, a network of messengers and scouts spread throughout the Dallas Pueblo territory, gathering supporters from distant villages and towns. Hall went out, Rise up, brothers, take arms against our tormentors. For our land, our people, and our way of life, we must resist. As dawn broke on a crisp spring morning in 1325 CE, the Taos Pueblo revolt erupted into chaos. Armed warriors, some on horseback, others on foot, poured out of the Pueblos like a pent-up flood. The Spanish garrison at San Ildefonso, expecting a routine patrol, was caught off guard by the sheer scale and ferocity of the rebellion. Gray wolf, little bear, and white deer led the charge, their faces painted with the symbols of war red ochre for courage, blue cornflower for wisdom, and white gypsum for purity. The air rang out with the clash of steel on steel, the scent of gunpowder mingling with the sweet aroma of piñon pine. The Spanish forces led by Don Pedro de Peralta himself were initially taken aback by the Pueblo warriors' ferocity and cunning. 
They had underestimated the Dao's Pueblo people's determination to defend their land and way of life. As the battle raged on, it became clear that this was not a mere skirmish, it was a full-blown rebellion. For weeks, the war raged across the high desert landscape. The Taos Pueblo people fought valiantly, employing guerrilla tactics, ambushes, and raids against their Spanish oppressors. The Spanish, however, held out hope that their superior numbers and armaments would eventually crush the rebellion. As the seasons changed summer sun, beating down autumn leaves rustling in the breeze, winter snows blanketing the land, the war continued to unfold. Baos Pueblo people adapted to the harsh terrain, using their intimate knowledge of the landscape to outmaneuver and outflank their foes. The war was a test of endurance, with both sides suffering heavy losses. But for the Taos Pueblo people, it was a question of survival. Their very existence hinged on their ability to resist Spanish colonization. They knew that if they failed, their way of life would be extinguished forever, replaced by the cold, calculating logic of European conquest. In the end, it was not the strength of arms or the might of empires that decided the outcome of the war, but the indomitable will to live free. The Dao's Pueblo people emerged victorious, their rebellion a beacon of hope for all indigenous peoples struggling against the tides of colonialism. And so as the sun set, on, on a new era in the history of Taos Pueblo, the warriors returned home, their hearts heavy with the toll of war, uh, but their spirits unbroken. The land itself seemed to sigh in relief, the wind whispering secrets through the adobe walls, the pinyon pine trees rustling their leaves in approval. For in this place, where the Rio Grande River flowed like a lifeblood, the Taos Pueblo people had secured their right to exist free from the yoke of Spanish oppression. The sun was setting over the adobe-walled compounds of the Taos Pueblo, casting a golden glow over the dusty streets and peaky estufas that served as the homes of the Taiwa people. The air was alive with the sound of laughter and children's play, the smell of roasting green chile wafting through the air. But amidst this peaceful scene, a sense of unease hung like a thick fog, waiting to engulf the very fabric of their existence. It was a time of great change in the Taos Valley. The arrival of Spanish explorers and settlers had brought with it new customs, new diseases, and new conflicts. The Taiwa people had long been wary of these outsiders who seemed to carry with them an aura of power and entitlement that belied their small numbers. In 1325 CE, tensions finally boiled over. A group of Daos Pueblo warriors, led by the fearless and cunning Chief Tijuano, had grown tired of the Spanish incursions onto their land. They had watched as the settlers cleared forests, killed game, and polluted their sacred rivers without so much as a word of permission or compensation. One fateful day, a party of Spanish settlers arrived in the valley, led by the arrogant and reckless Captain Pedro de Mendoza. The Taiwa people, feeling threatened and disrespected, saw this as the perfect opportunity to strike back against their oppressors. Under cover of night, Chief Tijuana's warriors crept into the Spanish settlement, their footsteps silent on the dry earth. With a fierce war cry, they charged forward, spears at the ready. The Spanish, taken by surprise, were quickly overwhelmed. Several settlers fell to the ground, their bodies torn apart by the swift and deadly blows of the Taiwa warriors. The homes of the Spaniards, made of wood and adobe, crumbled beneath the warriors' relentless assault. The sound of shattering pottery and splintering timber filled the air as the very foundations of the Spanish settlement were destroyed. It was a bold declaration of resistance, one that would send shockwaves through the region and beyond. In the days that followed, the Dao's Pueblo warriors continued their campaign against the Spanish, targeting not only their settlements but also their livestock and crops. The once peaceful valley was now a battleground, with smoke and flames rising from the ashes of what had been a thriving community. As the news of the revolt spread, it sent ripples of fear through the Spanish colonies to the south. As Puebla warriors had shown that they would not be intimidated or subjugated by these foreign invaders. They had taken a stand for their land, their culture, and their very way of life. And so the stage was set for a long and bloody conflict, one that would rage on for decades to come. But for now, the Dao's Puebla warriors basked in the glow of their triumph, knowing that they had taken a crucial step towards reclaiming control over their own destiny. The sound of drums echoed through the valley, a rhythmic celebration of resistance and defiance in the face of overwhelming odds. The sun beat down upon the parched earth 
as the Spanish army marched towards the Taos Pueblo, its soldiers clad in shining armor, their swords and lances at the ready. The year was 1325 CE, and the winds of change were blowing across the vast expanse of the southwestern United States. The once peaceful Pueblo nestled amidst the Sangre de Cristo Mountains had been simmering with discontent for years. The Dallas Pueblo people, a proud and resilient tribe, had grown tired of the Spanish colonizers' encroachment upon their lands, their culture, and their way of life. As the Spanish army approached, the Pueblo's inhabitants readied themselves for battle. Warriors, skilled in the art of warfare, donned their finest regalia. Feathers, beads, and intricately woven blankets adorned their bodies. Women and children, too, took up positions along the periphery, uh, determined to defend their homeland against the invaders. The Spanish commander, a seasoned veteran named Don Pedro de Peralta, had been instructed by his superiors to quash the uprising with an iron fist. His army was well equipped, having spent months traversing the arid terrain and gathering supplies from distant outposts. As they crested the hill overlooking the Pueblo, Don Pedro surveyed the landscape, his eyes scanning for weaknesses in the Dallas Pueblo's defenses. The warriors of Dallas Pueblo, anticipating the Spanish attack, had prepared a series of traps and ambushes to slow their enemy's advance. They knew every nook and cranny, every rocky outcropping, and every hidden arroyo that could be leveraged against the invaders. The terrain itself became an ally in this conflict as the dry washes and scrubby mesas allowed the Taos Pueblo fighters to disappear into the landscape like ghosts. As Don Pedro's army descended upon the Pueblo, the Dallas Pueblo warriors unleashed a hail of arrows and stones upon the Spanish columns. The invaders responded with cannons and crossbows, but the defenders were well prepared for this kind of attack. They had observed the Spanish tactics in previous battles and knew to avoid direct confrontations whenever possible. The battle raged on with both sides suffering heavy losses. Don Pedro's men were taken aback by the ferocity and cunning of their foes, who seemed to vanish into thin air one moment only to reappear in a deadly ambush the next. The Dallas Pueblo warriors, meanwhile, fought with a fervor born from desperation and deep connection to the land they defended. As the sun began to set on this day of bloodshed, Don Pedro's army was forced to regroup and reassess their strategy. They had failed to crush the uprising and the Pueblo remained defiant. Its people determined to resist the Spanish occupation. The stage was set for a long and brutal conflict, one that would test the mettle of both sides in the years to come. And so, amidst the dust and chaos of war, the Dao's Pueblo warriors continued to wage their guerrilla campaign, using every trick in the book to harry and disrupt the Spanish forces. The terrain itself became a battleground as the two armies clashed in a series of hit-and-run attacks that would leave neither side unscathed. In this crucible of conflict, the Dallas Pueblo people forged a new identity, one that was born from their struggles against the Spanish invaders. Their bravery and cunning would become legendary, inspiring generations to come. The battle for Taos Pueblo had begun, and would be fought on many fronts in the hills and mountains, in the valleys and canyons, and in the very hearts of its people. The sun beat down upon the arid landscape as the dust devils danced in the distance. The air was thick with tension as the two armies faced off against each other. The Dallas Pueblo warriors, clad in their traditional attire of deer skin and feathers, stood resolute behind their makeshift fortifications. Across from them, the Spanish conquistadors, armed to the teeth with steel and gunpowder, sneered with condescending superiority. The revolt had begun over a decade prior, sparked by the Spanish colonizers' relentless encroachment upon the Dallas Pueblo's land. The once peaceful coexistence had turned into a battle for survival as the Pueblo people fought to protect their way of life. Despite being outnumbered and outgunned, they had managed to hold off the initial attacks, but at great cost. The landscape around them was scarred by the constant warfare, crumbling adobe walls. Once proud symbols of Pueblo culture now lay in ruin. The earth itself seemed to have been scorched by the relentless battles, as if the very land itself had been wounded by the conflict. Crops withered and died, livestock scattered or slaughtered, leaving behind only desolation and despair. As the Spanish army regrouped and reorganized their forces, the Taos Pueblo warriors knew they couldn't hold out forever. Supplies were dwindling and morale was beginning to fray. Yet despite the odds, they remained steadfast in their determination to resist the invaders. Their leaders, wise elders who had guided their people through times of plenty and scarcity, 
rallied the troops with impassioned speeches and prayers. We will not be defeated, one such elder declared, his voice carrying across the dusty expanse like a clarion call to arms. We will not be forced from our lands. We are Taoist Pueblo, and we will stand tall against the forces that seek to destroy us. The warriors responded with a fierce cry, their voices echoing through the valleys as they prepared for yet another battle. Spanish, too, regrouped and reformed their lines, fueled by their own unyielding zeal to conquer. As the sun dipped below the horizon, casting the landscape in a fiery glow, the two armies clashed once more. And fire ripped through the air, sending earth and stone flying in all directions. The scent of gunpowder filled the nostrils as muskets and arquebuses spat forth their deadly projectiles. Amidst the chaos, the Pueblo warriors launched their own counterattacks, charging forward with war cries and bows at the ready. The battle raged on for hours, the sounds of war mingling with the mournful calls of ravens and the distant rumble of thunder. As the night descended, both sides withdrew to regroup and reorganize, each knowing that the next day would bring more of the same brutal fighting. And yet, despite the unrelenting violence, the Taos Pueblo people held fast, their determination to resist the Spanish invaders unwavering. They had already suffered heavy losses, sons, brothers, fathers fallen in battle, but they refused to yield. Their way of life was at stake and they would fight to the very end to preserve it. As the stars twinkled above, the warriors huddled around campfires, their faces lit by the flickering flames. The elders' words echoed through their minds, We will not be defeated. And with that resolve burning within them, they prepared for another day of battle, ready to face whatever the Spanish might throw at them. The revolt would continue for over a decade more, a protracted and bloody conflict that would leave scars on both sides. But for now, as the darkness enveloped the ravaged landscape, the Dao's Pueblo warriors stood firm, their hearts filled with a burning passion to resist to survive and to preserve their culture in the face of overwhelming adversity. The sun was high overhead, beating down upon the dusty earth as the Spanish army marched towards the Taos Pueblo. The air was thick with tension and anticipation as the warriors of the Pueblo watched the foreign invaders approach. For weeks, rumors had circulated about a large force of Spanish soldiers making their way to the northern reaches of the land, intent on claiming the region's rich resources for themselves. As the army drew near, the Taos Pueblo people prepared for battle. The men and women of the community gathered in secret, their faces set with determination as they discussed strategy and tactics. The elderly wise ones spoke of ancient traditions and prophecies passed down through generations which foretold of this very moment. Meanwhile, the Spanish army, led by Don Pedro de Peralta, a seasoned conquistador, pressed on undeterred by the warnings from local tribes about the fierce resistance they would face. Theirs was an empire built on conquest and conversion, and the Taos Pueblo was merely another obstacle to be overcome. As the Spanish army came into view, the Taos warriors readied themselves for battle. They donned their traditional garb. The men wore deerskin and buckskin breeches, while the women adorned themselves with colorful blankets and headdresses. The air was electric with excitement as the two forces faced off against each other. At dawn on a crisp spring morning in 1340 CE, without warning, the Taos warriors launched a surprise attack upon the unsuspecting Spanish army. The sound of drums and rattles filled the air as the Pueblo's defenders charged forward, their bows singing with deadly accuracy. The Spanish soldiers, caught off guard, stumbled backward in disarray, trying to regain their composure. Their armor clanked loudly as they scrambled to form a defensive line. But it was too late. The Taos warriors had already gained the upper hand. The battle raged on for hours, the two forces exchanging blows and taunts. The Spanish army, realizing they were outnumbered and outmaneuvered, began to falter. Panic set in as their ranks broke and they turned tail, fleeing in disarray. The Taos warriors, sensing victory, gave chase, harrying the retreating soldiers with arrows and stones. In the end, it was a decisive defeat for the Spanish army. Many were killed or wounded, while others fled back to their distant homes, never to return. The Taos Pueblo people had emerged victorious, their Pueblo and way of life protected from the encroaching forces of colonialism. As the dust settled, the Taos warriors gathered around their leaders, sharing stories of bravery and cunning. The elderly wise ones smiled, knowing that their prophecies had come to pass. The people celebrated long into the night, feasting and singing in joyous commemoration of their triumph. 
the Dow's Pueblo Revolt of 1340 CE would become a legendary tale, passed down through generations a testament to the unyielding spirit of a proud and resilient people. As the sun dipped below the horizon, casting a golden glow over the adobe buildings of the Taos Pueblo, the air was electric with tension. The inhabitants of this ancient settlement had been preparing for this moment, for what felt like an eternity, the day they would finally take back control from their oppressors. The Spanish conquistadors, led by Don Diego de Vargas, had been exploiting and terrorizing the Taos Pueblo people for years. They had stolen their land, ravaged their crops, and brutalized their citizens. But on this fateful evening, something was different. The Pueblo's warriors, fueled by a burning desire for freedom and justice, were ready to strike back. As night fell, the attackers emerged from the shadows, their faces painted with intricate designs of red and black. They crept silently towards the Spanish encampment, their footsteps muffled by the dry earth. The air was heavy with anticipation as they prepared to launch a surprise attack. The first wave of warriors charged forward, armed with bows, spears, and clubs. The Spanish, caught off guard, scrambled to defend themselves but were no match for the determined Pueblo fighters. The attackers targeted the Spanish officers seeking to eliminate their leaders and demoralize their troops. As the battle raged on, the Dow's Pueblo warriors fought with a ferocity that would be remembered for generations to come. They had been driven to the brink of desperation by years of mistreatment, and now they were taking back what was rightfully theirs. The Spanish forces caught in the chaos of the attack began to falter. Their lines broke as the Pueblo fighters pressed forward, relentless in their pursuit of victory. Panic set in among the conquistadors as they realized they were vastly outnumbered and outmaneuvered. In the end, it was a rout. The Spanish forces were forced to retreat in disarray, leaving behind their dead and wounded. The Daos Pueblo warriors had emerged victorious, their bravery and cunning proving too much for the invaders. As the dust settled, the Pueblo people celebrated their hard-won victory. They danced in the streets, singing songs of triumph and freedom. The air was filled with the sweet scent of burning incense as they honored their ancestors and the spirits that had guided them to this moment. The Daos Pueblo Revolt of 1325-1340 CE would go down in history as a defining moment in the struggle for independence and self-determination. It marked the beginning of a new era of peace between the Pueblo people and Spanish forces, one where the indigenous population would be treated with greater respect and dignity. The aftermath of the revolt saw the Dow's Pueblo people establish a new government free from Spanish interference. They rebuilt their community, strengthened their social bonds, and reinvigorated their cultural traditions. The memory of their bravery would inspire generations to come, serving as a testament to the enduring power of resistance and resilience in the face of adversity. In the end, the Dow's Pueblo Revolt was not just a battle for land or resources, but a fight for the very essence of who they were, a people determined to preserve their way of life and protect their sacred lands. The victory would be remembered as a beacon of hope, shining brightly across the centuries, reminding all who lived in the shadow of the Sangre Cristo Mountains that even the most seemingly insurmountable challenges could be overcome with courage, determination, and the unwavering support of one's community. The sun had long since set on the dusty plains surrounding the Taos Pueblo, casting a warm orange glow over the adobe homes and ceremonial structures. The air was alive with the soft murmur of stories being passed down from generation to generation, tales of bravery, determination, and resilience that had been woven into the very fabric of Taiwa culture. As night fell, the people gathered around the fire pits, their eyes aglow with a deep understanding of the events that had shaped their community. The Dallas Pueblo revolt, which had taken place over a century ago, was still etched in their collective memory like a scarlet thread running through the tapestry of their history. The story began in the early 14th century when the Taiwa people were facing unprecedented challenges from the outside world. Spanish conquistadors armed with steel and guns had begun to encroach upon their lands, seeking to claim the riches of the new world for themselves. The Dao's Pueblo nestled deep within the Sangre de Cristo Mountains, was a stronghold of Tiwa resistance, a place where ancient traditions and ways of life were still very much alive. As tensions mounted, the Pueblo's leaders, wise men and women, who had been trained in the ancient ways of their ancestors, knew that they had to take drastic measures to protect their people. They gathered together in secret conclave, sharing 
stories and legends passed down through generations about the bravery and cunning of their forebears. From these discussions emerged a plan, a bold, daring scheme to drive the Spanish out of their lands once and for all. The Dallas Pueblo revolt was born. Its leaders determined to use every trick in the book to outwit and outmaneuver their foes. As the days turned into weeks, the Pueblo's warriors began to prepare for battle. They fashioned crude but effective weapons from obsidian and bone, honed their fighting skills in secret skirmishes with rival tribes, and developed a network of scouts and spies to gather intelligence on the Spanish forces. Meanwhile, women and children worked tirelessly to ready the Pueblo for war. Food stores were stockpiled, medicine was prepared, and sacred ceremonies were performed to ensure the success of the rebellion. The air was thick with anticipation as the people of Dao's Pueblo waited for the signal to strike. That signal came on a fateful day in the spring of 1325 CE when a group of Spanish soldiers, armed to the teeth and led by a ruthless commander, rode into view to watch the Iowa warriors, hidden behind a screen of scrubby bushes and rocky outcroppings, watched with bated breath as the enemy drew closer. With a fierce whoop, the Dallas Pueblo revolt erupted into action. Warriors burst from their hiding places, attacking the Spanish forces with a ferocity that would be remembered for generations to come. The sound of clashing steel and the cries of the wounded filled the air as the two armies clashed in a frenzy of blood and dust. The battle raged on for hours, with neither side giving an inch. But the Taiwa warriors had something that the Spanish did not their deep connection to the land, their unshakable resolve and their unwavering faith in their own traditions. Slowly but surely the tide began to turn. In favor of the rebels, as night fell on the bloody battlefield, the survivors of the Taos Pueblo revolt gathered around the fire pits once more, this time to celebrate their hard-won victory. The stories and legends that had been passed down through generations were etched into the collective memory of the people, a reminder of the bravery and determination that had defined them for centuries. Today, those same stories continue to be told and retold around the fire pits of Daos, Pueblo, a testament to the enduring power of Taiwa culture. As the sun sets on another day in this sacred place, the people gather once more, their eyes aglow with a deep understanding of the events that had shaped their community and the bravery and determination of their ancestors who fought for their very way of life. The Daos Pueblo revolt of the early 14th century a tale of resistance and resilience in the early 14th century. A small but fiercely proud community of Taiwa people had been living in harmony with the land at the foot of the Sangre de Cristo mountains. Gasteu, Castanan said, del Catrinian. At their home, the Taos Pueblo, was a thriving settlement nestled between the Rio Grande and the Ma Mountains, where the confluence of the two rivers created a rich and fertile valley. This was a place where the air was crisp, the sun shone bright, and the earth yielded its bounty to those who lived in balance with nature. However, as the years passed, the Taiwa people began to feel the weight of Spanish colonialism bearing down upon them. The once peaceful Rio Grande Valley had become a hotbed of conflict as the Spanish conquistadors sought to claim the land and resources for themselves. Led by the ambitious and ruthless Diego de Vargas, the Spanish had been making inroads into Tiwa territory, imposing their own brand of Christianity and forcing the native people to adapt to their ways. One fateful day in 1325 CE, a young Taiwa warrior named Katsina, who was renowned for his bravery and wisdom, stood atop the Pueblo's highest ridge, gazing out upon the landscape. He beheld the devastation that had been wrought by the Spanish, the destruction of sacred sites, the disruption of traditional ways of life, and the suffering of his people. In a moment of clarity, Katsina knew that something had to be done to resist this encroachment and protect the Taiwa way of life. Thus began the Taos Pueblo Revolt, a valiant struggle that would span over 15 years and involve countless Tiwa warriors, spiritual leaders, and ordinary people. This was no mere uprising. It was a carefully planned and executed campaign of resistance designed to drive the Spanish out of their homeland once and for all. As Katsina rallied his fellow warriors, the Pueblo began to stir with anticipation. The air was charged with tension as the Taiwa people prepared for battle. They had always been skilled hunters and farmers, but now they were armed with determination, strategy, and a deep connection to the land. In 1328 CE, the first major skirmish took place as Tiwa warriors clashed with Spanish conquistadors in a series of bloody battles. 
the Taiwa fought bravely, employing their mastery of guerrilla warfare to harass and disrupt the Spanish supply lines. Meanwhile, Katsina led a group of skilled archers who specialized in hitting their targets from afar, striking fear into the hearts of the enemy. As the war raged on, the Dao's Pueblo became a beacon of hope for other Taiwa communities throughout the region. News of their bravery and resilience spread like wildfire, inspiring others to join the fight. The Spanish, however, were relentless in their pursuit of conquest, pouring more men and resources into the conflict. Despite being vastly outnumbered, the Taiwa continued to adapt and innovate, employing clever tactics such as hit-and-run attacks and ambushes. They also developed a sophisticated network of spies and scouts who provided crucial intelligence on enemy movements and plans. Eras. In 1335 CE, the tide of battle began to turn in favor of the Taiwa. A series of decisive victories against Spanish forces sent shockwaves throughout the region, causing many to question the wisdom of continuing this costly war. As tensions mounted within the Spanish ranks, Katsina saw an opportunity to strike a final blow. In 1340 CE, the Tao's Pueblo revolt reached its climax. Under the leadership of Katsina and his fellow warriors, the Tewa launched a massive assault on the Spanish stronghold in the nearby town of San Juan de los Caballeros. The battle was fierce and intense, with both sides suffering heavy losses. In the end, it was the Taiwa who emerged victorious, having successfully repelled the Spanish invasion and secured their freedom to live as they had for centuries. As the dust settled, Katsina stood tall, his eyes scanning the landscape he had fought so hard to protect. He knew that this moment marked a turning point in the history of his people, and so the Taos Pueblo Revolt came to an end, its legacy etched forever in the annals of Taiwa history. The bravery and resilience of Katsina and his fellow warriors would be passed down through generations, serving as a testament to the enduring power of culture, community, and determination in the face of adversity. The sun had long since set over the high desert landscape, casting a warm orange glow over the ancient adobe dwellings of the Taos Pueblo. The air was heavy with the scent of pinyon, pine, and juniper as the inhabitants of this sacred place prepared for another day under the yoke of their oppressors. It had been generations since the arrival of the Spanish conquistadors, bearing gifts of silver and gold, but also bringing with them diseases that ravaged the, nat the native population. The once thriving Pueblo was now a shadow of its former self, its people forced to adapt to the harsh realities of colonization. But amidst the despair and desperation, a spark of resistance began to flicker to life. A young warrior named Kanak, his eyes burning with a fire that seemed almost divine, sensed an opportunity to reclaim their homeland and restore the honor of his people. He had heard whispers of a prophecy spoken by the wise elders of the Pueblo, which foretold the coming of a great leader who would unite the fractured tribes and drive out the invaders. As Kanak gathered his closest kin and confidants, the whispers began to take shape into a plan of action. They knew that the Spanish were not invincible, despite their claims of divine right to rule over the native peoples. The Daos Pueblo had a long history of resistance dating back to the earliest encounters with European explorers. In secret councils and midnight meetings, Kanak and his followers mapped out a strategy for revolt. They would strike at the heart of Spanish power, targeting the garrisons and trading posts that dotted the Rio Grande Valley. The Dao's Pueblo warriors were expert horsemen and marksmen, well-versed in the ancient art of hunting and warfare. Meanwhile, rumors began to spread like wildfire through the Pueblo, as word of the impending revolt reached even the most isolated outlying settlements. Women and children huddled together, whispering prayers to their ancestors for protection and guidance. Elders pored over dusty scrolls, searching for clues in the ancient records that might foretell the outcome of this bold endeavor. As dawn broke on the Day of Reckoning, Kanak led his band of brothers into battle. With war cries echoing across the desert landscape, they descended upon the unsuspecting Spanish outpost at Daos. The clash of steel and stone was music to their ears as they fought with a ferocity born of desperation. The outcome was far from certain as both sides suffered heavy losses, but Kanak's vision had guided them well, for when the dust settled, the Spanish garrison lay in ruins, its defenders either killed or fled. The Dao's Pueblo had asserted their independence once more, their sacred lands now free from the yoke of colonization. In the aftermath, as the survivors tended to their wounded and mourned their fallen comrades, Kanak knew that this was only the beginning. 
How he envisioned a future where his people might live without fear of retribution or exploitation, where their culture would thrive under the warm desert sun. And so with a quiet determination, he set about rebuilding his Pueblo, laying the foundation for a new era of self-determination and resistance. The prophecy had been fulfilled, it seemed, but as the seasons passed, the winds began to whisper secrets of a greater struggle, yet to come one that